Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Survival Sea Lab. I'm Modi Aberandas. On today's episode, we're going to be making some machines that are going to help us automate the gathering of resources to build our Sea Lab, getting the main things like stone and glass, basically. And then also, we're going to be taking a little expedition out to a coral reef to gather some more materials to make a cool device that's going to help us with our further building efforts. So let's get going. I got lots to do. All right, so as I mentioned, we need a way that we can automate the process of gathering materials to build our sea lab out of. There's a couple of materials I'm going to use a lot of. I know I'm going to use a lot of stone and we'll use the chisel mod to make it a little bit fancier. Uh, we also will use some of this limestone and the same thing here. We'll convert this limestone over to a single mod pack. I don't know which one I like better just now. Uh, probably the chisel one because that'll have more textures to it, I think. Uh, and then we'll get it all converted over to a single type of limestone using the, the chisel mod and we'll be able to make some fancy stones out of that. I think I'll use that for like floors and different things like that, different accents. Um, but we'll need a lot of it. As you can see, I have tons of stacks of it already, but we'll probably need even more than this. Uh, I also need a way to automate making glass and I need a way to automate making stone. So there's a couple of things that we can do. Stone is super easy. You just need this thing called an igneous extruder. And this thing is pretty great. So if you plop it down here, you can actually make uh, stone, cobblestone and obsidian basically for free. Now, the reason is because these things are easily generated within the vanilla game. So this was added by thermal expansion and allows you to just generate cobblestone, stone and obsidian using lava and water and put it in the machine. Uh, this is a really great addition by thermal expansion, and we're going to take advantage of it to make ourselves a nice little automated system for making cobblestone and glass. So actually, all we need to do is plop this down someplace where we can easily grab it. Uh, we'll need some water uh, fluid ducts here. Uh, to transport water and I could probably use this um, aqueous accumulator that's right under the house here that's supplying our uh, currently supplying our um, little guys there so I think I'm gonna try to put it like right over here I'm gonna have to knock some of my nice tasteful uh, accents out of the way here uh, I'll take down a portion of the house I actually on my off time I made some uh, I made a couple more tools I made myself an axe here and this axe will take out a 3x3 area just like that and that's kind of nice um, I named her Catelyn after Catelyn Stark uh, and now we're going to, okay, so we need to figure out how we can get off of here. Uh, maybe if I go down below it, um, I wish I hadn't just had this axe by itself. Sometimes you need a precision axe, uh, as well as the, the big lumber axe. So actually, I'm going to put the lumber axe back. That's mostly going to be used for mining down trees and taking out trees and collecting out the wood. But, uh, this is just going to take one block out, and that's what I kind of want right now. Just a little more precision. All right, so if I get underneath this, uh, let's see here. Let's dig underneath it here. And it's cobblestone there. I can't take it out from the top. Okay, we might need a more, couple more fluid ducts here, I think. Because uh, we only have five. But, um, it should be okay. Let's see real quick. Uh, one, two, three. Four. And we're probably going to need a couple more here still. Five. I should make a few more. Okay, so let's make some more fluid ducts here quick. And let's just, uh, lead and copper, which we have tons of. As you can see, I've been mining quite a bit here. Uh, I have lots of materials now, and I haven't. Even, I mean, this is all from not even making a quarry yet. Uh, I've just been doing my mining with uh, good old Brian 2.0 there. Fluid ducks, that should be plenty. Um, six more of them. And okay, so let's put this like this, and then we'll put the igneous extruder uh, right on top of that. I left it over here, didn't I? Yes, I did. Of course, I did. All right, let's, let's uh, right-click that. All right, crescent hammer is always handy. One of the best things you can get, I think, is just having that, that crescent hammer to move around all your machines. All right, so igneous extruder. It's going to fill up with water now, in theory. Why is it not? Is it not filling up the water? It is now, right? No? Come on, you. Oh, I know why. I have to set the input on this thing. Right now, it's setting to output to the bottom. We'll set the input to the bottom, and there you go. Filling with water. That'll be plenty of water. Now we just need one bucket of lava from down in my mine. And I should be all set to start making infinite cobblestone for ourselves. Uh, let's set up a chest next to it. And actually, I'm going to upgrade this to an iron chest just so we can have tons of room for it. I have plenty of iron to do so. So we'll set up an iron chest right next to it here. Actually, did I make one already? I might have made one in preparation for this. I did. Uh, let's make one more because I'll need another one for the glass too. So let's have two iron chests. One for glass, one for uh, one for the other thing here. Cobblestone, not cobblestone. We're going to regular stone, not cobblestone. All right, so we will set it up so that uh, the igneous extruder is just going to throw all of its stone into here. Uh, so we'll set the output to the next to it here. And or do we want it on top? Maybe we want it on top. Can we uh, just uh, set that on top here maybe? That way we can just get access from the very top there and I'm not taking away any room for my other machines I'm going to have here. So this will be my iron chest. 
or not my iron chest, my iron chest full of cobblestone or regular stone. And we can use the, the chisel mod to convert that regular stone into even cooler versions of stone. Or we can use it to make stone bricks or anything like that. Uh, so that's gonna be the goal for that. I should probably seal up this hole in my house here. Uh, but I don't wanna seal it up all the way yet. I'm not gonna fix it and repair it all nicely just yet because we'll need to take this conduit that's coming off of here, I think. And uh, we'll, we'll do um, a little power for our next phase of this operation here. So let's seal this up quickly. And what happened to all my what happened to all the wood I used here? Uh, well, how did I have this set up? I had a wood thing here, a thing here. Probably throw some glass in there now, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll fix that in a little while. Uh, anyways, let's just let's just fill it in. Let's just fill it in. It's not gonna be too pretty right now, anyways. So let's just put it in like that, and we have our conduit coming off right there. Uh, it's gonna be dark, so I'm gonna take a little sleep here, and then we'll head down to the mine, get some lava, and start our production on our stone. All right, here, let's grab a couple buckets and then we'll head down to the mine. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work on this thing here. I uh, just almost want to take you through it quick to show you how much I've been doing. I mine this all out. I put it in stairs to make it nice uh, entry and exit. Oh my God, we already got some, some guys down there. I don't have it well lit, apparently. I have some, some holes in the operation here. But uh, Brienne is going to defend us here. This this hammer does tons of damage against uh, undead. Like I just did 20 with a the critical there with uh, just my one swing of the hammer all it took so i have this nice path here going down to uh just the deep reaches of the oh my god we have a creeper coming at us now oh my god all right let's let's try to avoid him doesn't do as much damage against creepers but it still does enough damage because this is a steel weapon still that uh yeah it's still pretty handy but it does extra damage against undead creatures so let's get down this is my basement where i found some diamonds for the very first time i think that was a couple episodes ago Take care of this guy. I gotta light this up a little bit better. Maybe I'll work on that in my off time here. Uh, so there should be lots of lava over here next to where we were making our uh, obsidian before. All right, so we got two buckets of lava. I wanna take that on my hot bar just in case I drop it on myself. I don't wanna accidentally uh, burn myself alive. That's not the way to go. All right, so let's eat something on our way up here and then we'll head back up and we can start our production on our coal. Oh my God, here we go. Let's, let's get this guy. We'll start our production on our stone as soon as we can safely get upstairs here. I didn't quite finish my steps just yet, as you can see. We have bats everywhere. Uh, let's, uh, okay, so my smeltery is going really well still, but I've been using my my factory production over here mostly to, uh, you know, put the stones, let's put the ores in the ingots, uh, and that's been going pretty well. So, let's see here. Um, so, let's put the, now that we're back up here, let's put the uh, lava into the igneous extruder here, and it'll start going. Click it like this, or I think I just have to right click it with, uh, Luck pocket in my hand here. Oh, we got a friend coming up after us. Get out of here, you. You don't want a piece of this. The other thing I did in the meantime here, I don't think you probably noticed it as walking past. I set up a open blocks uh, tank here full of XP just so it can keep dying and it don't waste all this XP I'm gathering. It's already full though, so that's like 16 uh, levels or so at least. Probably more than that, probably 30 levels. I'm not even sure how much 1000 is. Uh, let me just take, you can take levels out of it very easily. You click it with an open hand. Come on, leave me alone. I'm trying to I'm trying to talk to my talk to my audience here. Leave me alone. All right. So if you click it with a open hand, you can get some levels out of it, and that's kind of cool. So you take a, I got two levels. I got wow, I got a lot of levels out of there. You can just drain them back in by standing on a little XP grate here. So that's pretty handy. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can have even more XP storing in there. Uh, that'll be in the near future here. I have enough speeding to do it, so we will do it. All right. So now I'm gonna get this glass out of my hot bar here, and we got lava producing and stone is being created and it's filling up my thing here it's a little bit slow but it'll always keep going off of my off time it's not consuming the lava it's only consuming the water and the water is going to replenish from my octopus accumulator over there so we're never going to run out of stone i probably need oh i need tons of stacks of this i'm going to need an entire chest of this in the long run here so i'll just let this thing go forever produce as much stone as it can as long as i'm in the chunk have it loaded here it'll continue to, to produce stone and i might want to set up a world anchor over here to uh, keep it loaded all the time so it's always going on the stuff over here. Um, something to consider down the road. All right, so let's look on to phase two here. Phase two is building a glass factory. And the way that's gonna work is it's gonna be the same principle basically, but a couple extra steps in it too. We're gonna have an extruder creating water for ourselves, same as before. We're gonna have a pulverizer pulverizing the stone into sand and the, the redstone furnace creating the sand into glass. So it's a three-step operation. It requires a little bit of power in order to do this, but we will be able to have infinite amount of water and infinite amount of glass here now as well so let's lay down the igneous extruder right next to this one and uh let's, let's turn off that output just in case uh let's turn um let's get another pipe coming off of here again gotta get underneath there get that going 
So I just need to bring the pipe that's right next door to it. Hook that into the next one over. And there we go. And that should fill up with water once I set this to blue. There we go. And I need another thing of lava to start producing more stone with this one. And that's good, good to go. Okay, it's producing cobblestone, which is now what I wanted. Uh, so let's just take that out for now. Let's get it producing stone. Okay, so now it's producing stone. We can, uh, what do we want to do this? Let's take a pipe. Let's make a conduit coming off of the bottom of this little redstone block here. Oh, there already is one. Uh, no, we don't want to do that, do we? Because this is going, this is going right from, let's see, this is coming off those two things into here. And this bottom one is set to output. So it's outputting power from the bottom here into the other one. So actually that should be okay. It'll split the, some of the power that's coming off of these things right into the uh, redstone furnace, but that's not a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, this, this, this lead cell is already filled up already, so we don't have to even worry about it too much. Um, and I've gotten tons of coal in my mining expeditions, and I've been making charcoal on the side just so I have enough on the on the side too. So let's uh, let's lay down a couple conduits here. Did I grab those? I did not. All right, let's grab those conduits here. I left them all in this chest off to the side. Uh, three conduits should do it. And let's get going over here. All right. So let's see. We want this producing stone, moving it over to here. Uh, I do believe stone is macerated. Is it not? Let's just take a look here quick. Uh, we have to look up the recipe for sand. Uh, that's, that's all we have to do. Uh, so let's uses. I don't want uses. I want recipes. Recipes for sand is uh, macerator, cobblestone. Oh, so we actually do need to make cobblestone. Or does stone work as well? Cobblestone, cobblestone. Okay, so we don't want smooth stone. We want cobblestone, actually. I was wrong. Uh, so we'll get some cobblestone. And we'll have this conduit coming off of here. Oh, I know you one more conduit. No, actually, I'm okay. Uh, perfect actually let's just throw the co two conduits there and we'll go pulverizer and we'll set the input to the left perfect and the output to the right now this is going to create a byproduct of gravel occasionally but the gravel won't ever get removed so we'll have to check this occasionally just to make sure that the gravel is getting pulled out otherwise it'll stop pulverizing if it doesn't have any room to put the gravel that's coming in so that's something we'll have to be aware of I might want to create like a void for it somehow uh, I could do that or I could just create a chest that'll put the gravel off to the side too uh, so I could set this top one up to pull the pull the um, the uh, gravel out off the top and make sure this is set to red and we'll pull the cobblestone to the side. So yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's do it that way. Uh, and then we'll do redstone furnace here and this will input from the left. It's getting power. Perfect. Let's put this back here. Now this is uh, undefended at the moment, so I might want to set up a little bit of an annex to the house here. Add on a little partial addition to protect this from the uh, elements and the monsters, which will probably explode my landscape here. Um, okay, so let's let's see here. Is it working? And it is creating stone. Nope, not what we wanted. Shoot, what did I do wrong here? All right, there is creating sand, and this should work. All right, red is going to the right. Why is it not? There it is. Finally, there it goes. Okay, so once this gets up to full power, we'll be in good shape. Let's uh, go over here quick and make sure these things are turned on. I think they're off at the moment. We'll just get the power regenerating itself. Uh, oh, it's set to 40 only. Let's up that to 80. Um, that'll get it going faster here. And these things are going to fill even faster now, too. They have some stuff inside of them already. Oh, just a little bit. But it'll be enough to get going here. Um, this this conduit, or this leadstone energy cell is losing power, but it's actually got 40,000, 400,000 RF in it. And that 40, 400,000 RF, we can actually make that... Uh, we have the means probably to make that upgrade it to now, to a hardened leadstone energy cell using some invar. Not too expensive to do that. Uh, so this has got full power on it now. It's producing glass. This has got full power on it now. It's producing uh, pulverized cobblestone, which is sand. And this is producing cobblestone, which we're turning into our glass then. So this is my full glass factory. I'll have infinite amount of glass now, as much as I'll ever need. This takes amount of time. Now I could upgrade these things and have two of them going and have even more glass over the long run. Uh, that's something I could do. You know what? We, could ch we should set up an item duct so this doesn't ever fill up. We don't have to even worry about it. We'll just pull the, uh, the gravel into the side there. I see you over there. I see you looking at me, getting up my business. Get out of my face, you. All right, so let's uh, item duct. Let's see what's that. What's that recipe exactly? I think it's probably just copper and leadstone or lead as well. Item duct. Item D. There we go. Uh, for an oh, opaque one, we just need um, tin, lead, and a tin. All right, cool. So we got that for sure. Two tin and a lead. And put that in the crafting table. We only need a little bit of this. And we got enough item ducts. Just I'm just going to pull out the um, 
the gravel out of the top and put it in the chest next to it as well. So we'll have gravel and uh, glass in this chest. If I, did I set the output right? I did not. All right, so that'll take it out now and put it right into the chest above, in theory. Come on, you. You can do it. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, cool. Let's do it. It's just a little bit slow. And then we'll take this and put it into here. And we just got to hit the wrench on this once to make sure this is going out and then in. Uh, don't want to turn that around. It almost, almost accidentally spun my uh, pulverizer out here. I make sure everything's set up correctly here. So the gravel should be showing up in here. Yeah. So we're going to get like, I think it's 10% chance you'll get gravel when you make this this uh, sand. But that's that's fine. We'll have 10% of this whole chest then will be uh, just gravel. And the gravel we can use for flint or whatever else we want to use. All right. So it's going to be night here. I'm going to take a snooze. And then we'll wake up for the next day. And then we will uh, get on with making our, or get making, but gathering some supplies for a, uh, a new thing here. So let's get going with that. All right, so it's a bright, shiny new day, and we have to head off to a coral area. And the coral area I have marked on my map. Uh, it is way far away. Unfortunately, I had to do a lot of exploring to get to it. Uh, we'll need our diving equipment. I think I left that out at my site over there, uh, at my building site. So I think we'll have to grab that with our speedboat on the way. There is a cell over there. I'm just going to drop off my pack here so I don't have any extra stuff I don't need on me. All right, our pack's a little bit cleared out. I will, you probably notice I have some new type of food in my hot bar here. I have a monster jerky. And the way I'm making, making this, if you're not familiar with Tinker's Construct that much, I'll just go over this quick with you. Uh, this is uh, what's called a drying rack. You can put on monster meat onto it. And over a course of like a couple minutes, it'll dry out and it'll create this monster jerky, which basically performs the same as, uh, as that uh, rotten flesh except it will not have any of the side effects of creating hunger. So that's kind of a handy thing. Anyways, we're going to take our speedboat out and head out to the, the Sea Lab Site 1 over there. And uh, we'll grab my stuff, my diving equipment and all that, and we'll head over to the Coral Reef beyond that then after that. Quite far away, just to open my map here just to show you, I have the Journey map on now, as recommended by one of my viewers, and thank you to, thank you to him. Uh, and uh, my Coral Reef is way over here on this alcove here, and you can see our ocean is quite large, so I choose this, this site right in the middle here, to uh, put our site one at uh, that'll be our very first building it's going to be kind of a, a dome structure i believe um, i'm still kind of planning it out in my mind but we should be breaking ground on it very soon now that i have that production facility going with my stone and my glass we should be breaking ground on it probably next episode i would imagine um, if we can get this ma thing made now the thing we're trying to make here is called a mechanized sponge and the mechanized sponge lets you drain water from an entire area you basically need a couple sponges you need uh another couple things to make the thing. But basically, if you lay down the sponges, put some RF power to the mechanized sponge, it'll instantly drain out all the water out of the area. And that's exactly what we need to build underwater structures quickly and easily. Draining water is the hardest part about building underwater here. So we'll get that uh, all going here. Uh, I think I have everything I need right in here. Yes, I do. Uh, I had to make myself an extra diving helmet and air supply just in case I drowned down there, which did happen uh, when I was off camera here. I uh, died, I had to dive underwater to get all my stuff, and I couldn't do it without uh, killing myself again and again, so I managed to get most of my stuff back. Uh, luckily, I didn't lose anything, I don't think, um, but yeah, it was it was kind of inconvenient. So I made a second one of these, and I have it keep, kept over here just in case uh, I need it. All right, so let's grab our... Oh, don't you fall. Don't you dare fall. Oh, that would have been bad. Uh, and let's hopefully not make this air pump fall too. Oh, good. Okay, we got both of the things we need. We need a conduit as well, which I kept in here handily enough. And we got our speedboat, and we'll head off to the bright, shining coral reef right over there. So I'm going to head over there. It's going to be a little bit of a drive because it's 500 blocks away, but I'll rejoin you once I get close. Oh, before we get going, I want to stop quick and let you know this, this thing on my map you probably saw here. Uh, it is a basically a base for the, the future building. So I laid in a bunch of cobblestone. I lit it up a little bit. Uh, that's going to be my future site of the building here. It's going to be about 25 by 25, I think that was what I uh, ended up with right now. So... We'll get building that shortly here. I need enough cobblestone to do that. It's, it's like something like 10 stacks of material in order to just build a floor for it. So I need to basically get going on making my automated process here to build something really cool here. Uh, anyways, let's head over to the Coral Reef and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we're just approaching the jungle, which is right next to the uh, Coral Reef here. I found some oil and that kind of thing around the way here. I don't know if, how much I'm going to use of that. Uh, I might not. It's Sometimes pumps and, and making refineries and all that's more trouble than it's worth. Uh, I might focus on like lava power and that kind of thing or making a an MFR uh, tree farm to make to make charcoal and we can power something off of that and then we'll look at other other uh, power options I think too. So um, the coral reef here, let's see if I can find one that's even closer. Uh, it's tough to see, I will say. Uh, it took me a long time to spot it because I didn't know what I was looking for exactly. But now that I've seen them, I know what they look like and I can find one pretty easily now. 
Uh, but down here was the closest one we could find. And so let's hop out of our ship here and let's just take a look here quick. I'm not gonna swim down there because I don't have enough, but as you can see, there's all kinds of coral. It's just out of view at the moment. And sponges, that's mostly what we're after here is sponges. Now I think we need, oh, we'll probably need a good number of them. We'll probably need like maybe uh, 10, I would say. is is, is It's more than enough. Um, we'll need two for the mechanized sponge, I believe, and then five to make the uh, the thing to, to complete the water. So uh, we need uh, seven sponges in order to do this okay so i'm gonna grab, grab some wood here unfortunately i didn't think that i i, I should grab my angel block so i didn't have to make a little bridge out there but uh we'll deal with that um let's see i have my 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 old uh i have old uh i have old brand here let's just grab some stone here quick to make a little bridge for ourselves i should have thought to grab the angel block on my way over but fortunately i didn't and now we don't have the means to really make another one or anything like that just yet so I'm gonna have to grab some stone here, and there should be plenty of stone to make a nice little bridge up for ourselves. All right, we're right above the coral reef right now. I can see some sponges down there already. We just gotta drop our uh, air pump and drop our conduit here and drop our uh, leadstone energy cell, and we'll be all set. Uh, let's put this down here. Now let's change the front of it to output. That's the way I faced it, and it's all ready to go. Okay, let's dive and pray for the best here. Uh, is it replenishing? Yes, it is. All right, cool. Look at all these sponges. Um, these sponges. That sponge is an interesting block. I mean, it was in the original Minecraft, uh, the classic version of Minecraft, but uh, they took it out because they changed the water physics, and it wasn't making much sense to have a sponge in there. Um, so they got rid of it, and it's still a part of the game, though. Uh, and it's odd that this this uh, mod pack actually uses it. Uh, they found a way to incorporate it back into the game using the mod pack, and now it sits back in. So now we have the sponge, and we'll be able to make the mechanized sponge using these things. Uh, so let's... Is this brain coral or something we can do with? I wonder if we can do anything with this brain coral. Let's grab it too, and just let's just take some of the stuff and see if there's anything we can do with it. Uh, I don't know what's going to be useful for getting it. Maybe some stuff. Maybe an axe? Nope, doesn't matter. How about a sword? Sword works a little bit faster. So is there any uses for brain coral? Yellow dye. Oh, that's not a bad. Um, we can make it into a partially, partially bleached coral as well. All right, so that's pretty much the only use for it, but this might be a good source of different dyes if we need them. Uh, let's grab a couple more of these sponges, and then we'll head back up. Six should be plenty, seven should be plenty. I'll just grab like 10, just to be safe. All right, so we've got the sponges we need. Uh, we'll head back to the uh, house here shortly, but um, I think that might be where I call this episode because I'm just gonna head back to the house and uh, we'll start making the mechanized sponge next time. But the problem is that in order to make the mechanized sponge, we actually need a couple other items and they're not easily gotten. So let's take a look at sponge here. Uh, mechanized sponge requires a type of fish, any type of fish it looks like, aluminum, an iron construction block, which we can make no problem, and water droplets. Now, water droplets, unfortunately, are only obtained by breeding fish. So, we are going to have to explore fish breeding next episode in order to get ourselves a mechanized sponge. It seems like the long way around to get something so interesting, but we'll make some fish quick. We'll just do it very, very quickly. We don't have to get too deep into it, doesn't look like. Um, we'll get some, uh, some water droplets, just need two of them and then we'll be all set to make this mechanized sponge. But that will be next episode, and then once we have the mechanized sponge, we should be all set to start breaking ground at our new building. So, I've been Modi, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back for more Survival Sea Lab next time. So, have a good night!